Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in this video, we will talk about the degradation of proteins and the role of cathepsins and uh, proteasomes in the protein degradation and also their clinical importance in protein degradation. Right. So, to begin with, all proteins in body are constantly being degraded because every protein has its own half-life. Right. So, half-life of a protein is a time taken to lower its concentration to half of the initial value and the general tissue proteins have half-lives of few hours whereas key enzymes have half-lives about few minutes only. So, pest sequence, what is a pest sequence? That means as we are aware proteins, I mean all enzymes or proteins are made up of amino acids, right. So, if in case of if the protein is getting its half-life, so these amino acids will get exposed. Right, pest sequence, the areas rich in proline, glutamate, serine and threonine will give a signal that the half-life of protein is getting over and it has to be break down very quickly. So, proteins taken by endocytosis, one of the uh, mechanism in breakdown of these proteins and also fused with lysosomes. So, lysosomes play a major role in breakdown of these proteins, I mean half-life completed proteins. The half-life of proteins are highly variable from protein to protein. Okay, and ornithine decarboxylase, which is an enzyme which has got only 11 minutes. After 11 minutes, has to be degraded. And to compare with the hemoglobin, the half life of hemoglobin depends on lifespan of RBC. So, lifespan of RBC is 120 days. So, after that, RBC has to be lysed and hemoglobin has to also to be lysed. The lens proteins, crystalline remains are unchanged throughout the life of the organism. Whereas, damaged or defective proteins are prematurely degraded because they are of no use and they just simply occupy the space to avoid that damaged or defective protein has to be cleared from the system. The phagolysosomes. So, phagolysosomes are the particles that are broken down by enzymes known as cathapsins. The term cathapsin is a Greek word which means to digest. Cathapsins are 8 in number, designated A to T. Most of them are active around 3 to 5, that means acidic pH. So, cathapsins works at acidic pH. Intracellular protein breakdown also occurs independent of lysosomes. The involve, which involving ubiquitin, okay, and it is so named because it's in all cells abundantly. It's a small protein with 76 residues, which is uh, having a molecular weight 8.5 kilodaltons. Ubiquitin is attached to proteins, so whenever there is a half life over, this ubiquitin will just digest the protein. Ubiquitin tagged proteins are immediately broken down inside the proteasomes of the cells. So, Sihanover. Hashko and Rose were awarded a Nobel Prize for extensive work in uh, ubiquitin proteasome uh, combination that means ubiquitin mediated protein degradation. There is a regular turnover of intercellular proteins. The half-life of proteins is highly variable. As I mentioned in the beginning, ornithine decarboxylase which has got 11 minutes time. Insulin has a half-life of few hours whereas half-life of hemoglobin depends on the lifespan of RBC. The length of protein is uh, crystalline, it's a, it's a lifetime thing. And majority of proteins have turnover rate of few days and damage or defective proteins which has to be prematurely degraded and cleared from the system. So, when you see the diagram here, as I told you, diet is a major contributor of amino acid pool in our body and also body protein breakdown is also another contributor for this amino acid pool. So, from this amino acid pool what happened? So, the excretory part of proteins is urea. So, it is 60% will be excreted from the amino acid pool as urea. And free amino acids in the blood will be 20%. So, plasma proteins will be 10% in making of them. And body protein synthesis 10%. So, all together makes which is equal. So, the breakdown and the synthesis always equal in a healthy person. So, dietary protein, how it contributes to amino acid pool? By, via digestion and body protein breakdown via cathapsin, cathapsin mechanism. So, cathapsin are substances which break the half-life completed proteins. So, and other again, so intracellular protein catabolism, cathapsins and also ubiquitin pathway proteasomes also contribute this amino acid pool. So, amino acid pool as I mentioned in diagrammatic representation, again one more uh, diagrammatic representation. So, ammonia and forming urea formation, plasma proteins, body proteins in circulation. So, all together makes 100% of amino acid pool. Breakdown of muscle protein is a source of amino acids for tissues while liver is a site of disposal. So, remember here two organs, muscles and then liver in protein metabolism mainly. So, muscle protein is a source of amino acids. When we require amino acids, so muscle protein will be broke down and then amino acids will be formed. Whereas, this amino acids again will be degraded and they will be uh, the main thing present in amino acid is uh, nitrogen which is the source of ammonia and this ammonia has to be disposed via the detoxification center liver. So, we will see 
how this protein uh, and amino acid combination or concentration varies depending upon the states like fasting state and well fed state in fasting state muscle releases mainly that means fasting means we are already lacking energy so for energy so gluconeogenesis has to be taken place so gluconeogenesis literally what is that synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate so protein is a non carbohydrate so when protein broke down it forms amino acids so we learnt in another classification of amino acids based on metabolic fate glucogenic ketogenic and both glucogenic and ketogenic so one when you remove the amino group from these amino acids uh, the rest of the carbon skeleton of these amino acids participation in making of glucose or ketone bodies so the such one amino acid that is alanine so this alanine coming from the muscles taken up by the liver okay and it will send the glutamic acid to a kidney uh, and by, by making glutamine okay liver removes the amino group and converts to urea urea is a safest product to be excreted in non toxic form compared to ammonia okay and rest of when ammonia group is removed the carbon skeleton is used for gluconeogenesis here we have to correlate the thing with the glucose alanine cycle uh, under uh, carbohydrate metabolism gluconeogenesis the brain predominantly takes up the branched chain amino acids because branched chain amino acids uh, leucine is ketogenic amino acid ketone body is also acting as a source of energy in case of emergency and also valine is both glucogenic and ketogenic type so when you see the diagrammatic representation you see the valine whatever is coming from muscle will be sent to the brain to use as a ketogenic uh, nature okay and glutamate which will be sent to the kidney to form ammonium ions which will be playing major role in buffering mechanism of our body right and alanine which is coming from muscle will be sent to the liver to participate in gluconeogenesis and removed amino group will be formed as urea so amino acids from the diet are taken up by different tissues both muscle and brain take up branch chain amino acids and release glutamine and alanine and whereas glutamine is delivered to kidneys to aid regulation of acid base balance while alanine is taken up by the liver for gluconeogenesis so how the inter organ transport of amino acids after taking food that means fed state okay in fed state so valine will be going to the brain and glutamine will be going to the kidney and alanine which is coming from the intestine that means after the digestion and absorption this alanine will be sent by uh, liver to what's muscle to uh, make up the proteins so ammonia pool here what are the sources and fate of ammonia so ammonia means once protein degraded they will form amino acids once these amino acids degraded they form carbon skeleton and ammonia carbon skeleton involved in making of glucose or ketone bodies and the removed amino group that will be involved in making of ammonia okay so what are all the contributions for this ammonia glutamic acid deamination process amino sugars pyrimidines putrefaction glutamine all the contributes making of ammonia okay so ammonia from ammonia and what it makes glutamic acid and glutamine so glutamic acid is already having amino group so when you add ammonia to glutamic acid it will be converted to glutamine so that means glutamine is carrying two amino groups literally okay and aspartic aspartic acid is also having one amino group so if you are having ammonia to uh, this uh, amino group or ammonia to the aspartic acid it will be converted to aspartic and whatever the left term in like uh, one ammonia that will be involved the source of nitrogen here urea one part donated by ammonia so nh3 c double bond o sorry nh2 c double bond o nh2 this is a empirical formula of uh, urea so here this nh2 is donated by ammonia so that's all about the uh, role of catepsins and ubiquitins in degradation of proteins and the clinical significance thanks for watching thank you